The carrier, state-of-the-art techniques in graphene device fabrications has allowed for exceptionally high electron mobility in graphene. To date, many experiments have reported electrical transport behavior approaching or at the ballistic limit, where the electrons can move thousands of interatomic distances without experiencing any scattering. In this video, we discuss the Landauer model in understanding transport in this ballistic regime, and derive simple expressions describing the ballistic conductance in graphene. The electronic structure of graphene at the two inequivalent kappa and kappa prime valleys can be described by Dirac Kona shown. We refer you to our previous videos on the calculation of the electronic structure of graphene in this series. The energy has a linear dispersion relation written as shown, where h bar is the Planck constant, and vf is the electron Fermi velocity, which is about 300 times smaller than the speed of light in free space. The energy where the two cones intersect is called the Dirac point, and we have conveniently set the Dirac point energy to be zero. The band above it is called the conduction band, while the band below is the valence band. Due to the linear dispersion in graphene, the electronic density of states is also linear in energy, with the expression given below, which we have also derived in a previous video. Suspended graphene devices can be fabricated through mechanical exfoliation as shown here. Graphene, when suspended, can exhibit more superior electronic transport properties since it is removed from any substrate-related surface charges, defects, and phonons. Measured carrier mobilities in these suspended devices can approach values that correspond to electron mean free paths of order 100 nanometers. Here, mean free path refers to the average distance before an electron encounters a scattering event. Since nanofabrication has enabled device dimensions of about 100 nanometers, ballistic transport in graphene is within reach. Recall the classical definition of resistance in 2D, given by the material's resistivity rho multiplied by the device's aspect ratio. Conductance is the inverse of resistance, and the material's conductivity is the inverse of resistivity. Conductivity, sigma, is given by the electronic charge times the electron density n, times the mobility mu. Such linear dependence of carrier conductivity with density are typically observed in graphene devices, as shown on the right, particularly during the early days of graphene research. However, with advancement in fabrication techniques, particularly that of suspended ballistic graphene devices, much higher electrical conductivity are achieved. In addition, one also observed a new square root of n-dependence of the conductivity, instead of the linear n-dependence in the diffusive regime. Is the square root of n-dependence a signature of ballistic transport? We will answer this question in what follows. We shall adopt the Landauer picture for quantum transport, which we introduced in a separate video, linked in the description of this video. The main idea is to think of electrical current flow as due to electrons injected from the two electrical contacts, herein denoted as the source and drain. We consider a graphene channel with width W and length L as shown. We depict the graphene electronic structure in the middle panel accompanied by the Fermi-Dirac distributions in the source and drain metallic contacts. The green dashed lines denote the Fermi level, which are all aligned at the same energy since the system is at equilibrium when there is no applied bias across the device. No current flow in this case, since the injected current from the left perfectly cancels that injected from the right contact. Now, we consider an electrical bias V on the right drain contact. A positive voltage V would shift the Fermi level downwards, as depicted. Thus, the source and drain Fermi functions are now no longer identical. Therefore, the applied bias opened an energy window around the Fermi level for electrons to flow, where the difference in the source drain Fermi functions is finite, as highlighted in yellow. The current should then be proportional to the number of transport modes, m, weighted by the difference in the source-drain Fermi functions, integrated over energy. 
We shall elaborate and derive an explicit expression for M later. We begin our formal derivation of the ballistic current starting from the Landauer formula as shown. Due to the applied bias V, the drain Fermi function is shifted in energy when compared to the source Fermi function. Considering the applied bias V to be small, then we can express the difference in the two Fermi functions in terms of the leading order term in the Taylor expansion. At 0 Kelvin, the differentiation of the Fermi function with respect to energy is the Dirac delta function located at the Fermi energy. This allows us to collapse the integral in energy, thus arriving at a compact expression for the current. The electrical conductance, G, which is given by the derivative of I with respect to V, is thus given by the von Klitzing conductance multiplied by the number of modes m. This is great, if we know what m is, which will come next. Let's consider a graphene sheet of dimension W by L, where L denotes the length of graphene where electrical current flows, and W is the width which is transverse to the current flow. Along the width, it is customary to assume that it is sufficiently wide and impose the periodic boundary condition. We introduce the transverse wave vector KY, which is along the width direction, and transverse to the transport direction. KY is then given by 2 pi times n divided by W, where n is an integer denoting the number of wave cycles that can fit within W. The maximum allowable KY is the Fermi wave vector KF. Thus, the number of different transverse modes, n max, can be written as w times kf divided by 2 pi. The total number of transverse modes, or also known as transport modes m, would have to also account for the positive and negative wave vectors, the spin and valley degeneracies. Thus, we arrived at an expression for m. Inserting this result into our previous expression for the Landauer ballistic conductance, we arrived at the ballistic conductance in terms of Kf. Recalling that the electron density in graphene is given by the Fermi wave vector square divided by pi, a result we derived in previous videos, we can then obtain a final expression for the ballistic conductance, which is proportional to the square root of n. We compare this again to the well-known diffusive conductance, which is proportional to n instead. In summary, we see that the ballistic and diffusive conductance have distinctively different dependence on the carrier density. In addition, the ballistic conductance does not depend on length L, contrary to the inverse L dependence for the diffusive case. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes.